chapter 1 functions. First of all, we're going to look at what is the meaning of functions. For me, functions nothing but just a relations that connect all of our actions to the result. It basically tells us that if you take these actions, this will be my result. So imagine now, this juice processor is act like a function. If you do nothing until you put some of the fruits into it. So those kind of fruits are what we call as input. So if you pick apple and put it into the juice processor here, this function is going to help us to process and give us apple juice as the output. So function is doing nothing but just tell us that what is the output or the result based on the input or the action that you take. If you ever play Among Us, if you know that as an imposter you have two more functions which are sabotage and kill. Let us see more about sabotage. Imagine now sabotage is just act like a function. You have a bunch of choices for us to choose. So for instance, we can choose to sabotage the nuclear reactor, electricity or communications. Of course, if you click one of the button, let's say nuclear reactor, this sabotage function is going to process it and give us the result. As a result, some of the nuclear reactor will be melt or maybe the light will off. So basically, this sabotage function is whatever that relate all of our choices that we choose to be the result. But this kind of functions can be represented in a few ways. One of the ways is in error diagram. Error diagram is written down as two oval shapes here, where left hand side is showing us a bunch of the choices, just like the menu that we see in the restaurant. Meanwhile, the right hand side is just all of our possible results based on the choices that we have. And this function is going to help us to process and link it up for every single choice. But since every object has only one image, we may say that this relation is eventually one to one. And remember that to be a function to be valid, every of the object must have only one image. Cannot be more, cannot be less. And we're going to learn a few more terms for this chapter. The first term is going to be domain. Domain, it means that it's a set of the choices that we have. Since I mentioned it's a set, so when they ask for domain, you're going to write down in the set notations. So for instance, we're going to say that domain is equivalent to, is a set that consists of reactor, electrical, door, communication, and oxygen. So remember one more time again, domain is a set. Meanwhile, core domain here is just basically just tell us that this is a set of the possible result. And it's a set, so remember to put it in the set notations. And we're going to do, learn a few more terms here, where we call it an object and image. Object is basically just a single choices. It means that electrical is one of our object in the domain. Door is also one of the object. So object is just the individual one. Same thing here. Image is the individual result. So a light off is one of the image. So let me ask you something now. If I say, if I ask you that, what is the image of reactor? So we go to the reactor and see that what is the image. Then we will see that eventually meltdown is the image of reactor. Or now I ask you that, what is the object of disruptions? So we go for disruptions and we see, link it back. And we know communication is the object. So object and image is just the individual choices or result. So what if now I put in, in one more possible result, which is suicide. But as we know, as an imposter, it's impossible for you to suicide. Since this is not linked up by the domain, so this one we can say that this is out of range. Whoever that is paired up and linked up, we will say that those are a set of range. Since I mentioned a set, so if they ask you for range, we're going to say that it's a set that consists of meltdown, light off, door close, disruption, and flush the all two out. And don't forget, 
whoever that has no partner will be say that it is out of range and it's not included in the set. So this is the range, as you can see, range. So now we're going to learn about how to write down in a more formal way or we call it as a function notations. So function notation always start with a name first, just like you, when you're a baby, your parents are going to give you a name, a pretty name and a handsome name. So here I'm going to give my functions the name of sabotage. After the name, I'm going to put a bracket and inside the bracket, I'm going to give me give us any of the possible choices. This choices is eventually an unknown. Why is it? Because I don't know your choices until you tell me. So something that we don't know, we will remain it as an unknown. And after the equal sign, those are the output. It basically tells us that how should we process your input and give you back as the result. But in mathematics, we always had to write something very long. So this is why we prefer in the shortcut way, means in the short form. So for sabotage, I can just choose S to represent my sabotage. Bracket, remember, this is just the choices of yours. So for me, I'm going to choose C as the unknown. And after the equal sign, all of these are just how we process your request. So let's say if you choose 5,000 as your lucky number. So after we receive your request, I'm going to minus 4,896 and I will get 104 as the result. And this result is going to be our output and this is what you will get as the user. So let us show to you something that you will see in your textbook or more often you will see in the workbook where we represent our function as f and bracket is our input. Again, this input is just an unknown where we, we don't know what is your request until you tell us. And after the equal sign is whatever the process of how we're going to do what we're going to do with your choices. So let us have a recap again what is error diagram. Our left hand side is the domain, it's a set of choices. Right hand side is a core domain where it's a bunch of the possible results. Whoever there's a link is called as range, whatever is not linked is out of range. And in the middle is our function name. So M is our function name, it's going to receive X as our input. So this is a menu that you're going to choose, like whatever numbers you're going to choose and you tell us, and we will process it by times two to whatever the request. So it means that if you take, if you pick one, I will give you two as a result. If you pick three, I will give you six as the result. But we know definitely it's not 15. So this is out of range. So can you tell me that what is the domain here? So of course we know domain is a set. So it's a set, we can say that Domain is a set of one, three, five, and seven. So this is our domain. What is our core domain here? Would you like to try it out? So yes, you are correct. So inventory is a set of two, four, sorry, it's two, six, 10, 14, and 15. And remember that 15 is included it just not under our range, but it's still included in our core domain. Next is our, what is our range? Since I said that whoever that is linked up is within the range. So only whoever that is linked up, but it's a set that consists of two, six, 10, and 14. Remember, don't include the 15 because he has no partner. So the one more thing is, I want to ask you that what is the image of three? So image of three is I go to three first and check what is his partner. And I know six is the image. So I will say that the image of three is six. Let me ask you again, what is the object of 10? So object of 10, I reverse it and I may get five as my object. And the last question I'm going to ask you is what is the type of relations? Since every object have only one image, then I will say that this is a one-to-one -one relations. 
So of course, we, we can use other way to represent this kind of functions. Arrow diagram is only one of it. Next, we're going to learn how we represent this kind of functions in terms of order pair. Order pair is like, I'm going to put the couple into one coordinate. Every couple is combined to be one coordinate. So you can imagine that it's in the coordinate system where we have the domain and core domain, or to be more precise, we can say that is the object and image. It's like how one maps to two. So we have one, two is one couple, three, six, five, ten, and seven, fourteen. And all of this, we're going to put it into a set. This is how we represent functions in the order pair. Lastly, we can also represent our function in the graph form. In the graph, we always remember that is the y-axis and x-axis. And our x-axis usually, usually is our domain and our y-axis usually is our core domain. And how we're going to plot is we're taking up all of our possible domain first. Remember, it's from our domain here and our y-axis will be our core domain. And after that, we just need to plot the coordinate just like the graph of functions. So once we plot it up and we are done, this is how we represent a functions in terms of graph form. So this is the more beautiful version of it. So can you see that our X axis is actually all of our domain and our Y axis is all of our core domain here. So we can see that one is mapped to two, three is mapped to six, five maps to 10 and so on. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.